Hey pups, Arpy here. So, remember when I did an Art Speaks about Blue's Clues and You? Well, I'm doing it again. Except I'm gonna review the show and talk about it as a whole. As far as what we've seen from the first few episodes, of course, at the time of scripting this. So for starters, they got a new host to the show, Josh, real name Joshua Craig De La Cruz, whom you may recognize as Aladdin from the Disney-made musical the same name. Though in 2018, he decided to retire from Broadway to become the new host of Blue's Clues and You. And honestly, I feel like Josh does have a similar spark to what Steve had in the OG Blue's Clues show. Speaking of which, a lot of OG fans and I are thinking the same thing. Does it still hold to the original? Well, let's see. So far, the time of scripting this, there are about nine episodes from the first season. Me and Josh is basically a rehash of the Snack Time episode, where we find out Steve and Joe make a brief appearances in the show, and the nostalgia hit hard with us OG fans. Either watching the show for nostalgic purposes, and to see how well the show starts off, or for parents who grew up with the show, to watch with their kids. And plus, looks like Steve has an occupation involving mysteries and clues. Kind of a callback to what he did back in the day. And apparently Joe works at the present store. Huh, so we might be seeing him in some future episodes along with Steve. Also, they explain to Josh what the game of Blue's Clues is and what it entails. Basically, if you somehow either never heard of the Blue's Clues or somehow forgotten what it's about, it's basically about the doggy Blue leaving clues in the form of paw prints all over the house and the clues come in threes, such as clue one being a blanket, clue two being a pillow, and clue three being a book, for example. And this is kind of a way for Blue to communicate, and the viewer not only watches, but plays along as well. Hence the old Nick Jr. slogan, play to learn. Blue's Clues and You really emphasizes the you part of the title. The show is basically about the viewer helping the host, aka you, whether it was Steve or Joe, find clues to figure out what Blue wanted, or what she wanted to do near the end of the show. I did watch most of the episodes, and it does play off the same as what the episodes in the past show did, but I think some may have cut out or cut back some things to make the episode a little bit more fast-paced and quicker than how it was in the past. Like the part where Blue was painted the elephant, and I remember there being more than one in the older episode than how many were there in the newer one, but I could be wrong. But that's just a nitpick I have. Most of the episodes are just reboots and rehashes from one to the past seasons, such as Blue's ABCs, Blue's 1 to 3s, Play Day with Magenta, Big News with Blue, Sad Day with Blue, etc. But the one thing that kind of surprised me in Sad Day with Blue was that they put Magenta in place of Green Puppy. I guess to make this one friendlier because Green almost seemed like a bully. But in both episodes at the end, the both episodes ended a peaceful resolution. And personally, I did like Green, Magenta, and Blue as a puppy friend trio. But for them to cut out Green is actually kind of disappointing for me. Though granted she wasn't my favorite character, but hopefully they will bring her back in future episodes. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on this one, guys. And yes, Green Puppy is a girl. Deal with it! As for the songs, knowing they cast Josh as the new host, I feel like they made a wonderful choice with him. Yeah, the songs are slightly different from what most of us OG fans were used to back in the day, but if you take a listen to them, you'll grow to love them too. Heck, they even have a new theme song! The other one with Joe was... okay. I felt more drawn to Steve than Joe, if I'm being honest here. I mean, Joe tried, effort where effort is due, but he didn't have the same spark Steve gave off to the show, for me at least. There was always something missing with Joe when it came to me, but I'm getting off topic. The theme song... Well, I mean, I'd play it, but I don't want to get copyrighted and have the video taken down. But if you listen to the new theme song, the newer versions of the song such as Mail Time, and We Just Figured Out Blue's Clues, and so much more to list off, yeah, there is a difference there, I can definitely tell. But it feels like Josh kind of adds a similar spice to the newer version of the song. And I feel like he really does capture what Steve had back in the day. Speaking of which, as for Josh being the new host, again, they made a wonderful choice. Someone who's been on Broadway in a popular Disney musical and has a great singing voice, has a bit of a similar spark to what Steve brought to the show, does the part well, seems like a super chill and awesome dude overall. Heck yes! Again, nothing against Joe, effort where effort is due, A for effort, A for said effort, 
but Josh and Steve did the part of host way better. Plus, Josh even grew up with the show with his sister and cousin. At least that's what I know from my research, correct me if I'm wrong. So obviously, you gotta have someone familiar with the show if you're gonna make a reboot of it. Lastly, the animations, redesigns, and characters. Well, me personally, as long as you can make 3D, 2D, and live action animations work, then you've got my vote. Now, granted, the animation and everything else for Blue's Clues and You, it's a bit odd for me. But after watching a few more episodes and watching them over and over again, I eventually got used to it. They make it look really good. Plus, we can see some old characters back, and that's awesome. Oh, also, Paprika and Cinnamon grew up. Yeah. That's all I gotta say on that. As for some of the new voice actors on the show, while I miss the OG voice actors, the new ones got the characters' voices almost or evenly spot on. Yes, well, I do prefer the older voice actors for shows like Blue's Clues and Teen Titans. If you're gonna do a reboot of the show, you gotta do it right. I mean, look at Teen Titans Go. Ugh. Okay, the uh, chibi-like redesigns and the voice acting, I have no problem with, but really, you could make it at least a bit more pleasing to not only the fans, but the newer generation as well. Really, Warner Brothers? Really? And this is what Blue's Clues and You did better. And the same can be said for the Powerpuff Girls 2016 reboot. The new voices for the girls, yeah, I'm not feeling it. Blue's Clues and You, they got my vote. I mean, hey, at least the voice actors actually tried on like the newer ones in the Powerpuff Girls reboot. That being said, is the show worth watching? My answer? Yes! Or at least worth checking out to see if it still holds up to the original for the OG fans out there. Well, the hardcore ones. Most likely. Growing up, I didn't have the best childhood, so shows like Blue's Clues were my main source of comfort for me. Mostly with Face and Blue's Clues and other shows I found comfort in. You know, Face, the host of Nick Jr the comic relief of preschool shows. Nick Jr., please bring back face. We miss him. Whenever I watch Blue's Clues and You, I feel like my inner toddler slash preschooler is reborn or is alive again. And it's a huge source of comfort for me, especially when I feel my anxiety and depression creep up on me. That being said, it's worth watching or at least checking out to see if it still holds up for the hardcore OG fans, just to see if you love it or hate it. For me, I love it. That being said, if you watched a few or more episodes of Blue's Clues and You, leave your thoughts and opinions on the show in the comments below. Cue the outro. RP is out. Peace!